Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Dump and Change. Today, our guest on is Addie Scribner from our very own St. Cloud State women's hockey team. Addie, how are you today? It's a great morning to be on the podcast. Been waiting for this one, so super excited you guys started this. Yes, so tell us a little bit about yourself. What grade are you in? Where are you from? Yep, so I'm a fifth year from Woodbury, Minnesota. And yeah, just close to home, playing college hockey, love it. Did you grow up in Woodbury? Um, my family moved around a little bit, so spent some time in Kansas and Nebraska, but most of the time we were in Woodbury, and so that's what I claim as my home. Okay, and you're a fifth year, but you might have a sixth year. Do we um, know about this? Rumors are spreading. Eligibility is in the air, so who knows where I'll be next year, but working on that for now. So yeah, um, taking my COVID year right now, I graduated high school in 2019, so I'm a fifth year, but my freshman year could potentially be a red shirt season. And so then I would get an extra year next year. And so how did that all come about? Because we know that you transferred previously from Ohio State. Um, how did that all kind of go down your freshman year and being there and then transferring um, to St. Cloud State eventually? Yeah, so it could be a long, crazy story, but... We have time. Um, <laughs> To keep it mostly short, um, <clears throat> committed to um, Nadine Muzrall, who is still the head coach there. Um, I committed as a sophomore. It was before the rules had all changed, so I was pretty young. I um, was committed there for all three years and then went to Ohio State the summer before my freshman year. They like to have as many girls on campus in the summer as possible, and we got to take like classes with other freshmen, and it was super great um, for training and everything. So. Went there the summer before, did super well in my classes, was loving the hockey part and just everything being there. And then when school started in the fall, everything was still going super well. I was on second line and power play time, was not expecting any of that. Um, and then played two games and then was told, oh, you're suspended from the team because your grades aren't good enough. So you're not allowed at the rank or anything. And it was like, it was super weird. I was struggling in my classes. I was a biomedical engineering major and I was not ready <laughs> for that. That'll do it. <laughs> so yeah, I was taking calculus, chemistry, two engineering classes and was struggling. So um, yeah. And do you feel like, so, um, yeah. Do you feel like you had like academic support systems there that like could help or? Yeah, we did have tutors. I had an academic advisor who turned into my counselor. I went into her office and cried almost every day. <laughs> um, <laughs> but they're good for, but yeah. Um, yeah, there was a lot of support. Um, I was later that year diagnosed with ADHD. So that kind of helped me understand a lot of what's kind of going around in my mind. And it's really hard to manage everything. Um, and so then taking the hockey piece out of that was super difficult because then it took away any structure that I had left. Um, I wasn't allowed to work out with a team, didn't, wasn't allowed at the rink or anything. Um, so I was pretty much separated from the team. I was in a whole new state. Um, so that was a super hard situation. Um, so that's when I really just turned to God and leaned on my faith as much as I could. Um, I still had pretty good community there. I was able to meet a lot of people early on, but um, yeah, that was, Definitely hard and unexpected, um, and so it was kind of out of the blue. So, yeah, my professors had sent emails and saying, no, she's doing okay. Like, yeah. you know, I was doing everything I could. I was going to class. I was going to all my study hours and everything, um, and you can't be ineligible in the middle of a year. So so that's what was weird, too, wow. is, um, yeah, so I was kicked off the team. So it was up to your, your coach just yeah. made? So your coach just made. Pretty much. But yep. your grades were like? I was Fine. like passing, yeah. yeah, and yeah. I was failing like one class, like calculus, that I was really struggling with, but I was working really hard to get that grade up. Yeah, um, yeah, and I feel like that's what they so. look for most of the time. They're like, as long as you're like putting effort in towards mm -hmm. things and making it like, yeah. making an effort, actively trying to get it better, then most time I feel like they're pretty lenient about mm -hmm. it. Yeah. yeah, so that's why it was super weird. And then um, was not communicated with at all for, over six weeks until they finally called me in for another meeting. I had been reaching out, calling, trying to the get coaches. Yes, the coaching staff. And trying you to just get like answers. didn't go to the rink. Nothing. I wasn't allowed. I we texted. Um, I texted and asked, "Am I allowed to go to the games? Like, am I expected to go to the games still?" Yeah, it was just like, super unclear. 
I was told you're allowed at the rink to participate as a fan, but you're not allowed to engage with the team or staff or anything. Oh so, my goodness. Were you yeah. talking to other girls on the team at the time? Like yeah, about I was this still kind of friends with them. So yeah. it was super weird. Um, cause there was one girl who I was like, Oh, I'm like failing my math class and I'm super worried. And she's like, Oh, it's okay. I failed math my freshman year. And like, you think it's the end of the world, but it's not like, it's fine. Oh, but it was just, I don't know why. So it, it was just a different situation. Targeted. So yeah. Why? It was interesting. Have yeah, you figured I, it I out don't, yet? I don't know, but that's where, um, now, I mean, obviously I had the opportunity to transfer, got in the transfer portal. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, I was able to luckily transfer to St. Cloud State and I love it here and I'm yeah. super glad to be here. So yeah. it was just a tough journey getting here, but, um, yeah, now that I'm here, I don't regret it. So. Did that, um, impact like how you were feeling going into St. Cloud too? Was it kind of just like a anxiety about what this coach is going to be like or? Um, I think I was able to separate the situation and so. Now, being here, um, it was really hard just constantly comparing things here to being at Ohio State. It's a very right. different school, very different atmosphere. Um, and so I think that has been a challenge the last couple of years. And then kind of just like obviously the anxiety around school and like being ineligible again. Um, and I haven't been ineligible <laughs> since then, um, <laughs> like the one weird semester. But then, yeah. Um, a lot of anxiety from that, but definitely been working through that. And now, um, yeah, I love being here in the program that we're building. It's super cool to be a part of. So how long were you, like, not playing, not practicing for? How long did that period go on for? Um, it was probably, I mean, it was basically the whole season. So, like, I think it was, like, October 4th was the last day I was allowed to practice. Uh -huh. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then... After that, um, one of my teammates helped me switch my skates out. So it, I wasn't allowed to take any of my gear, but she kind of stole them for me. Oh, so I got my skates, nice. went oh. to public skate and was trying to do herbies and keep myself <laughs> oh, in shape. I would run the you. stairs in the dorm, like stairwell, trying to like get workouts in. Um, so it was crazy the things I would like come up with. But yeah, it was basically a year because that whole season, um, I wasn't able to, okay, <clears throat> to clarify. So I did become ineligible. I failed that one class, uh, my calculus class. And then my I had two credits that were, it's called varsity credit. And it's basically you get two credits for practicing and being a full-time varsity athlete yeah. at Ohio State. Um, hey, and so yeah, it was something like that. you had the opportunity to use if you wanted to. And so as a freshman, they were like, oh, yeah, you have a big schedule. You should like probably use this as a buffer. So I did that. And uh, but then since I was not allowed to practice by my coaches, I did, wasn't allowed to get those credits by the end of the year. Oh my and so then I was one credit short of being eligible. And so then that's why, um, actually the day after Christmas, my freshman year, my coach called me and was like, oh, you're ineligible, so you're cut, and I'm putting you in the transfer portal. And so, oh my goodness. yeah, so I was kicked off the team in October, but then I didn't actually get cut officially. I didn't know what was happening until December 26th. So, what yeah. Did, what did you say? Like, did you de did you defend yourself at all? I mean, I tried, but I wish I would have more, like, earlier on. But there was really, like, I don't know, it was such a weird situation. And as a freshman, like, you don't know yeah. what's going on. And so, yeah, so I did have people. I had a lot of support at the school and, like, within the athletic yeah. department that they were like, okay, this isn't right. Like, yeah. we're going to help you out. Um, so... Yeah, so it wasn't ideal. I still loved it there. I loved the school. I loved yeah. all the people. Um, but then again, it's just like I wasn't allowed the opportunity to play hockey anymore. So then I decided, like, I'd rather continue playing college hockey and go somewhere else. So Yeah. yeah. How did you <clears throat> land here? What made you decide on St. Cloud State? Um, I knew I wanted to stay in the WCHA. That was all the top teams and um, closer to home, obviously, being from Minnesota. And so, so then I kind of reached out to a couple schools. I got emails from schools. Um, and so St. Cloud had reached out to me and it was, okay, so this is also my freshman year is when COVID hit in the spring. Mm -hmm. And so then I, w I couldn't visit any schools because yeah. everything was locked oh, down. Yeah. So, um, like taking Steve the virtual McDonald, tools online, tours online. <laughs> yeah, and stuff. for real. No, exactly. <laughs> and so Steve McDonald was the head coach at St. Cloud at the time. And he took me on a little like FaceTime tour of the ring. No and way. So, yeah, because I um, I had never been to St. Cloud State before, and yeah. so I'd never like been here for camps or anything like that. 
Um, and so I'd never seen it and it was like so blurry and so like <laughs> laggy. I couldn't see anything. <laughs> You're like, I really um, got to go. <laughs> yeah. But I knew, um, it was a program that had potential. It was in a super good area. It's an hour and a half from home for me. Yeah. And, um, again, it's in, yeah, the top conference in the country. I wanted that competition. And so, um, yeah, I think at the time I thought it was going to be more of a building program than it was. But then now in these last couple years yeah. where we're getting to, I'm really starting to see how it kind of has been. And um, yeah, getting to be a part of this has been awesome. Just kind of going from an average team to now a top 10 team in the country has been so exciting. Yeah. How did that uh, feel for you beating your former team <laughs> <Yeah>. after <laughs> all of that? Yeah. Um, it's definitely been hard on former trips, just visiting there. Um, it's been fun getting to see old friends. Um, but again, yeah, it's just like, it was such a tough year that it can be very emotional being back there, but now, um, getting to beat them and just having a super good weekend there for us was almost, I don't know if it was like a relief or I don't know. It was just like super exciting to, um, just kind of come full circle and just know that I meant to be at St. Cloud state and yeah. just yeah. how happy I am to be here. And yeah, things are working out. Yes. Well, we're so happy to have you here. Thanks. So you are very strong in your faith. Mm -hmm. Addie leads our Bible study. Yes, yeah, so we talk about Bible study every once in a while. Oh, but good. So, <laughs> yeah. She's taught us a lot. What, have you always been so strong in your faith? What brought you to be so strong in your faith? How did that all go about? Yeah, so growing up, um, my parents are both believers. My extended family um, are all pretty much strong Christians. And so just growing in that environment was super helpful. Um, just from a super young age, it was expected that we go to church every Sunday as a family. And we had our little like kids Sunday school classes. So I enjoyed it um, and was taught how to read my Bible, how to pray, just kind of the basics of faith, um, mm -hmm. which I'm super thankful for. And my parents did a really good job of explaining to us that it had to be our own decision. We weren't saved because of our parents' faith or whatever, it had to be something that we believed in ourselves. And so um, I have three younger siblings, so that's kind of what I'm talking about. But for me personally, um, I really did understand and like take it to heart from a young age. So I actually made the decision to get baptized um, to like publicly declare my faith when I was eight years old. So I was pretty young, um, but it was my own decision. And um, kind of since then, obviously I didn't know everything when I was eight years old, but that's not really what it's about. It's God cares about your heart. And so since then, it's just been um, going through things in my life, such as my transfer process yeah. and different injuries and um, a lot of different things. It's just you're forced to kind of choose, okay, are you going to trust God and just really believe that what he has for you is good or are you kind of going to blame him or turn on him and um, go your own way? And so it's kind of that constant battle, but um, yeah, it's, I've, tried as much as I can to lean on him and to trust him. Um, and it's not easy, but yeah. that's really what helps grow our faith. So, was there yeah. times that came up that you did kind of face that battle and you were like questioning it a bit more? Yeah, definitely. Um, I would say, I think for me, yeah, it would always kind of be, it's always been a struggle of like, oh, is this a waste or is this like hard for no reason basically? Or like, um, I had an injury in high school where I broke my ankle super bad and it could have been like career ending for me. Luckily I had a super good surgeon. Um, and I think that was a, the first point in my life where I really had to struggle and I was taken out of hockey, taken out of all my sports. I felt like I was at my peak at the time. Um, and then I had to like really push into that where I was like, God, there's no way like this will make me stronger. Like yeah. this is the best thing for me. Um, and he doesn't force, like, he doesn't want those things for us. He doesn't want you to struggle. He doesn't want you to have pain, but he can take those things and work it for your good. Mm -hmm. And so breaking my ankle was one of those where I didn't, I didn't believe that it was the best thing for me, but then just kind of questioning him, not turning to other things yeah. was a big thing. And ultimately now, like, I'm thankful for that situation. I've like been interested in going into physical therapy because of it. And yeah. I'm able to be more compassionate with my teammates who are injured because of it and just so many different things where now I can see how that's playing out and so yeah, yeah. so like in terms of your attitude wise I guess too I feel like you've mentioned before like your personality in hockey has changed a bit in coming more into your faith 
Um, so how would that dynamic kind of change uh, growing up and growing stronger in that? Yeah, definitely. Um, we've kind of, yeah, joked about it at <laughs> Bible study how, um, like, faith really does change you just because of you're more aware of yourself and your actions and um, what's kind of the right thing to do. And so um, growing up, I think hockey for me was, it was definitely a lot more selfish. I I loved playing hockey and I would work my hardest, but I didn't really care that much about my teammates. Like it was more so like I played hockey for me and um, I would like try to be super focused and dialed in um, and like not really care about <laughs> the people around me. Um, but then I'd still try to be nice to them, but like, I don't know. I just wasn't very. <laughs> she tried. She tried so hard. <laughs> I did. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It was just more about me. And so then I had a lot of like performance anxiety where if I had a bad game or if we lost, I would just be bawling afterwards. And I like couldn't control my emotions because so much of my identity and my future in my mind was wrapped up in hockey. And so that was something I really had to learn to separate. And again, breaking my ankle really helped me do that um, yeah. to take a step back and say, OK, what's truly your identity? And for me, it's having my identity in Christ. Like, I'm a daughter of um, God, and that's what anchors me. That's what my, like, purpose is. And so hockey is now just a vessel where I get to use that. And so now I still, like, I still love hockey. I still, like, work as hard as I can every day. But it's more so to... I'm a lot more aware of my teammates and serving them and encouraging them and like being there for our team rather than just myself and my own performance. And it's so freeing being able to do that. So playing for God and nobody else, yep. which kind of like spreads out to playing for other people. But how do you like, how do you play for God and not care about what your coach, like mm -hmm. ultimately your coaches kind of decide yeah. your yeah. playing time. So, mm -hmm. so how do you do that? Yeah, it definitely is. Um, it's super hard as athletes because we're so used to working for what we get. So everything in our life, we think, oh, I earned that opportunity because I worked hard. But then with faith, it's the opposite. Like we were saved by grace through faith. And so we didn't earn our salvation. We didn't earn a relationship with God. He offers that to us. And so you kind of have to flip it and say like, okay, the coaches are giving me this opportunity to play. I get to go to the rink to see my teammates every day and really just um, taking hold of that and appreciating that um, has like, really helped my mindset too and just like brought joy back into the game. Yeah. And yeah. then we're able to play free in Christ. Um, and again, like God's always there as a resource for us. We can talk to him on the bench. Like I'm praying through games a lot of times and just like if something goes wrong, it's I'm super hard on myself, so I have to learn to, like, forgive myself, and so I'll, like, pray for that. I'll pray at intermission, like, just little things where I try to keep my mind on God and on the bigger picture rather than just, again, on myself, on my own performance, because then that just gets negative. So. Yeah. Were there times where you felt like, I don't know, either where you were making that transition towards more playing for God and you felt like it was a setback, like there was something that was kind of, like, testing your faith a bit um, throughout that journey? Mm-hmm. Um, I'd say honestly, this year, this season has been, um, kind of a work in progress for that. Our, t our faith will like always be tested. Like once you become a Christian, it doesn't just get easy as you guys know. And so, um, oh. <laughs> it's just something you always have to work at and like decide every day you have to surrender every single day that this is like the decision you want to make. And so for hockey, especially, um, yeah, like at the beginning of the season, I kind of started slow like points wise and stuff. And so then for me, it's like, I want to be um, the best player I can be. I want to be like a leader on the team. I want to be able to contribute like points and production, whatever. Um, but then for me, I really had to work again at like, okay, what's your identity? Why are you here on this yeah. team? Like, yeah. and making sure I was still doing things the right way, still working hard, but sometimes like the goalie make a good save and it's out of your control, like, <laughs> yeah. you know, or you'll hit the post and you're like, so well, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and so, um, yeah. So again, just kind of reflecting back on like, what can I do even if my performance on the ice isn't where I want it to be? And then again, it goes back to serving my teammates and, um, yeah, just kind of focusing on that more than yeah. yourself. What would you say to somebody who thinks that like the way that you describe playing for if that's like that's weak or like that's you know have you ever like heard that 
Yeah, I haven't personally gotten that, but I've definitely heard stories and I kind of know that's like a general stereotype of yeah. like Christian athletes, like, oh, they're soft or they don't care or whatever. Right. Um, but in reality, it should be the opposite. Like God doesn't want us to be soft. He want, wants us to like stand firm in what we believe. And um, we should be working harder than anyone else on the ice because we're working for God and he sees everything and he knows your heart. He knows your capabilities and like he gives us these talents to get to play hockey he gives us our healthy bodies we can't control that um and so and so exciting just to again have the opportunity and yeah to not I don't know you just can't really worry about what other people think and just to take pride in who you're playing for and just knowing that yeah we have that audience of one we're playing for God so no matter what the scouts think what the coaches think like just taking the opportunity and using the most of it so you should just show them how much you can bench. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, like, like mm-hmm. enough said, honestly. Mm-hmm. They'll yep, shut their mouths God. real quick. Uh, how much can that's you bench, I actually? Yeah. <clears throat> um, my, <laughs> my most recent, um, I think, one rep max calculated was 180. Oh, five. <laughs> but can you squat that? Probably not. I get crushed. <laughs> Mid season, I don't know if we're there, but yeah, light work. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's something. That's, that's like my five. We'll catch back, back with you in the off yeah. season. It's gonna be at like two. Yeah, Addie five. can. She can throw the weight around. Definitely. God's with her in the weight room. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. I'm praying through it. <laughs> Let's say that <laughs> you have to. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. God put you here for a reason. You've mm-hmm. taught. She's taught us a lot, mm-hmm. and um, it's great to have her leading our prayer and teaching us all of these things yeah honestly like do you want to talk a bit about um kind of how bible study has helped you grow yeah, a little that's bit what i was gonna ask <laughs> in every area honestly like <laughs> i thought that i was strong in my faith before i got here and went to went to church a lot every sunday when i could but turns out i knew nothing <laughs> Honestly, Avery's like, the kid asking all the questions. At every Bible time study. I, great at that. So I great. drag Bible study on two hours um, <laughs> because of all my questions. Yeah. I have a lot to learn from Addie. Yeah, so definitely. And I agree. And it's been such a great time having you here. And um, I really feel like I've personally grown a lot um, and I'm getting a lot closer with it. And using it in hockey is something that I'm definitely working on. It's very challenging. Like, um, I know that you gave me that book audience of one. If you haven't read it, it's, it's a really interesting like take on things. And I'm kind of working on shifting that athlete mindset and towards what you're playing for. Um, but it's been really great to have you as a guide and we're so happy that you're here. Yeah. I love having my teammates as, um, part of our discipleship group. So it's an honor to lead that. And then Avery and Jojo have been core piece of our group. So, yeah, <laughs> I love go. all the questions and just getting to press into our faith together. It's been awesome. Yeah, I believe Jojo might be taking over. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's in the works. We'll see. Right? I don't know if I'm ready yet. I I g- I'm like, well, if I'm going to have Avery in the group asking me questions, <laughs> I'm gonna, she <laughs> would never be able to answer no. the questions I have. Addie, I slump Addie, honestly. Yeah, and that's yeah, crazy. a little bit. But then Addie <laughs> and Katie both go back and do their research, and then they, they come get back, back to me. Yeah, yeah. See, yeah. I don't well, know. If we I can we just up. need to help you learn to figure out your own questions too, and just to <laughs> pursue that because see, it doesn't, doesn't have to do be it yourself. It doesn't have to be us answering it. You can. You have all the okay, tools. Okay, I so cannot answer those. You could do it. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Well, Addie, thank you so much for coming on today and um, sharing your faith with us and talking with us yes. about some very hard-hitting questions that we have. So, Yes, thank you. Yeah, thanks, guys. Always a pleasure to be here. Thank you guys for watching. We will see you guys next time on Dump and Change.